machine gun. It's not just a weapon, it's a cultural icon. For some, it's even a nickname. But in its essence, it's a lethal killing machine. With the ability to fire hundreds of rounds of ammunition in seconds, the machine gun has remained a constant on the battlefield since the Civil War. But of all the wars in which it's been used, it's the Maxim machine gun of World War I that brought the weapon to the apex of its lethality. Weapon, Maxim heavy machine gun. Rate of fire, 500 rounds per minute. Range, 4,000 yards. The first functional rapid fire weapon was the Gatling gun. Invented by physician Richard Jordan Gatling in 1862. But the rapid fire killing potential of Gatling's weapon was limited by its rather impractical design. The Gatling gun was heavy. It was uh, prone to malfunction with the cranking, the cartridges getting stuck. It wasn't exactly the kind of handy thing that you move across the battlefield at a good clip. And in fact, all the early Gatling guns were horse-drawn, so that certainly limited their mobility. The Gatling gun was largely abandoned by 1883, when another American, Hiram Maxim, invented the first completely automatic weapon. He was a man with a very fertile mind, uh, and in 1881, he went to London. Uh, while there, one of his uh, friends reportedly said to him, uh, Hiram, why don't you develop a new way for Europeans to kill each other? They're always at each other's throats. You can make a lot of money. And he kind of said, oh, okay, <laughs> I'll invent some guns. And within a couple of years, I mean, it took that little time, he had invented the machine gun. The automatic firing system of the Maxim machine gun consisted of an action, a reaction, and an action. When a round fired, it produced a recoil force that loaded the next round in place while simultaneously ejecting the spent cartridge. Maxim licensed his design to the British company Vickers, which quickly produced the Vickers Maxim machine gun. Allowed to keep the rights to his invention, Maxim proceeded to license his weapon to Russia and Germany. Germany immediately saw the potential for a rapid-fire weapon, and by 1908, they were mass-producing the Maxim machine gun under the name Maschinengewehr, or MG-08. Unbeknownst to Maxim, he had sold his rapid-fire killing machine to countries that would soon be enemies in the First World War. This is the Maxim machine gun. This is the German model 1908. And this was the standard machine gun of the German army in World War I. And this large thing that people at first thought it was an actual barrel, but this is actually a water jacket that goes around the barrel. The barrel gets so hot during the firing, the water cools it and keeps it from warping. And the ammunition uh, would come in belts of 250 cartridges. It would be steered into the feed here, and then cock it like this, pull the belt in another time, cock it again. Now you're ready to go. There's both thumbs on the trigger, and you're firing. And if all the conditions are right, you can fire 500 rounds in a minute. World War I created an arena in which the Vickers and MG-08 were pitted against one another. And although they were identical in design, the numbers available at the onset of the war were completely lopsided. The most organized and disciplined and clear-thinking force uh, in the European theater were the Germans. And they had seen the importance of the machine gun. They already had 12,500 Maxims, and it took the British forever to get them organized and flowing at the rate that the Germans had organized them and produced them. In September 1914, the German offensive into France was stopped at the Battle of the Marne. The Germans, now in a defensive mode, demonstrated the tactical importance of the Maxim machine gun. 
the homelands uh, to their rear and dug in. The machine gun proves to be the ideal weapon against enemy attackers. The role of the machine gun was to lay down tremendous direct firepower that until you could learn how to outflank it and to beat it by maneuver, drove everybody into trenches and stagnated the war. A machine gun could wipe out an entire group of men very quickly, thousands and thousands of men in a very short time. Although field commanders knew the dangers of facing machine gun fire in the heavily barbed wired no man's land, it did little to change their steadfast tactics. The mentality of stand up and face your enemy and fight was still in the minds of commanders during World War I. It was madness to think that the infantry were still the prime way of, of carrying a position uh, simply by walking into the face of machine guns, which is exactly the tactics that the British espoused. In no other battle of the war did the Maxim machine gun spill more blood than at the Battle of the Somme in July of 1916. The British commander, Sir Douglas Haig, calculated that by bombarding the German positions with enough artillery fire, uh, he could cut the German defensive wire, force the Germans underground, and that the British infantry then could charge through the cuts in the wire and get through the German lines before the dazed survivors could pop up from their shelters underground. Sir Douglas Haig was wrong. Uh, the uh, bombardment did not uh, cut enough of the wire. Uh, the Germans had prepared in advance uh, positions 50 feet or more underground uh, so that they could survive this terrific bombardment. After eight days of constant shelling, British commander Douglas Haig sent his troops out of their trenches to attack the German front. The cue to the Germans was the break. When the artillery barrage stopped, uh, they'd been in this war for almost two years already. They knew what was coming. It was not a hard thing for the Germans to figure out. Armed and ready, German machine gunners mowed down the attacking British infantry, killing thousands in just the first minutes. At day's end, 57,000 British soldiers were either wounded or killed. a dark one-day record in British warfare that still stands today. For the next four months, the Battle of the Somme raged. Eventually, the Allies declared victory. But the carnage left behind amounted to nearly one million British, French, and German soldiers dead many falling to their deaths under a hail of bullets from one of the deadliest weapons ever created, the Maxim machine gun. Because Hiram Maxim patented his machine gun in Britain, Germany was forced to pay a fee to the British government for every Maxim machine gun it produced. 